Hey, how's it going? And I'm excited to bring you this tutorial today on how to create an interactive cutscene. This is a really great thing to have in your game because it's more immersive and makes the player feel like they have control over the story that's going on. Now, this is just very basic and primitive. And while it might seem simple, it's actually fairly sophisticated what's going on because I've seen other people doing this in other ways and those ways that they said right up front weren't the best way to do it. And I was thinking, why are you showing us, why are you showing us not the best way to do it? We're going to be covering event dispatchers and how we can get the third person player communicating with the sequencer, which is not as simple as it might seem. So, but I think the solution is pretty elegant. It relies on event dispatchers. So anyway, this is what we've got. So we come into the game and here's my player character. And you can just imagine this is some... Um, so as soon as I get to the top of that ramp, the cutscene's going to start. It's really short. And now I'm frozen, right? I'm actually frozen right now. So what I can do is I press 1 on the keyboard. It finishes a cutscene. And then we're back in the game, just like that. It's really interesting, a cool feature to add to your game. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, I'm back and I'm ready to get started. One of the benefits of learning to do it this way is that we're not using the level blueprint. And so I've seen something like this done before, but they use the level blueprint, which is located right up here. And that ties it to this level, meaning that we don't have any portability if we want to move stuff to another level. Everything's tied to this level and it gets real problematic. Now, when it comes to communicating with the sequencer, things can get really, really wonky. And I have done other videos in the past where I've kind of illustrated that. By using event dispatchers and the techniques I'm going to show you today, we're avoiding a lot of problems. And I really think it is an elegant solution to make this work. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this here. And let's say this were a game, I'm just going to leave a message for my player, let's say, here. So I'm, instead of putting some other signage in here, I'm just going to say something like... So you can just imagine that that's an instruction somewhere to the player that they are aware of. Because that's what they're going to have to do to get things running again. First thing, let's go ahead and create a cutscene. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to go on the content level here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to cinematics level sequence. I'm going to double click into this and I'm going to go ahead and select this camera here. Now one of the things that happens and <laughs> I've explained this in other videos before is that when you click that button it does like 10 different things at once. So put us into pilot mode. It Sometimes it'll bring up the animation screen. It, it'll do all sorts of stuff. But one of the things it did is if you'll notice if you see that Thunderbolt right there it's actually spawned in our camera and we don't want that. I know some people like spawn cameras. I don't like spawn cameras. So we're going to right click and go convert to possessable. So it makes it a real camera that we can use after the scene is over. So it just works out better that way. Now here's the cool thing. It took us out of pilot mode. So I'm going to go back and select the cine camera. And with that selected, I did a video about this already of how you can pilot the camera. So just hitting W and, and the right mouse button, I'm just moving the camera's position actually right now. So I'm just setting up my shot here. This is just quick and dirty here. So this is going to be the first starting frame. So what I'm going to do is come down here on the sequencer, make sure I'm on the first frame here. I'm going to make sure auto keyframe is on. I'm going to make sure the camera is in focus. So I'll drag that up to 22. And once I got everything set up, I'm going to go ahead on transform and make a keyframe. That's it. And then I'm going to move my playhead to the end. And now I'm going to move my camera to where I think the character will be. I could put a stand in there and all that, but I'm just giving you the basic concept here. Okay, so that's my last shot. Now if I go back to the first frame again and I hit play, you'll see this is our shot or our cutscene. And our player should be standing right there. So now I'm going to close out of this for right now. And I'm just going to get out of camera pilot mode because it's really wonky. Because sometimes you get into sequencer, weird things start happening. So we're going to make two blueprints be able to communicate with our third person player. We're going to start with making a blueprint here. 
So let me just come up here, right click, create a blueprint, and I'm just gonna call this BP underscore trigger. And all this is gonna be is a trigger box. We're going to double click into it and dock it up here on top. I'm gonna come over here to add and get a box collision. Right, like that, double click it. Oops, double click it. And that's all we need there. And I can thicken up these lines so that I can see it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an event dispatcher. And I'm gonna call this start play, like that. And then I'm going to come into the event graph here. I don't think I need these, any of these. And with the box selected, I'm gonna come down here on begin overlap. With our event dispatcher, all I have to do is click here and I should be able to call start play right here. And all I have to do is drag this into here like that. What I need to do is drag it into the scene and come down here and place this where I want the player to walk. We're gonna go ahead and build the more sophisticated part of this. This is actually really, really interesting what we're gonna do here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we're gonna to go to Blueprint Class. You know what I'll do? I'll call it Event Relay because that's exactly what it is. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna drag it into the scene first off because that's the most important thing. It needs to be in the scene so our sequencer can relate to it. But what we're gonna do is we're going to double click into it and check this out. All we're gonna do is create an event dispatcher here and it doesn't matter what you call it, but I'll just put stop, play, compile, and save it. And believe it or not, that's all we're doing with this. So we have two blueprints, one's a trigger, and one's just has an event dispatcher in it, and that's it. Interesting, huh? With this blueprint selected, let's double click in here to our sequencer. Now this could be a longer cutscene, I'm just making it four seconds for in the interest of time. But with it selected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add it here. Add our BP event relay to the scene. We're gonna click this plus sign, and we're gonna add an event trigger here, like that. And then you can decide where you want the game to pause. So it doesn't really, the cutscene to, to pause. So let's say we'll just want it to pause right there. Then all we gotta do is create a keyframe right there to create an event. Come over here on this key and double click into this and it opens up the what's called the director blueprint and then what we're going to do we have to get that event dispatcher so we should be able to call to it you see it right there you can just drag off of here and get it call stop play right here and that's all we have to do here and compile and save it Everything we have left to do now is just in the third person blueprint here. So let's go in here. And this is the most challenging part that was for me to set this up. So, but it's pretty cool how it all fits together in the end. And so let's get started. I'm going to go, I'm going to close the sequencer now. And I'm going to come into the third person here. Double click there. And hopefully this won't turn into too much spaghetti. I don't think I need this details panel so I'm going to go ahead and close that and then we're just going to go ahead and pull this out because we're going to start from the event begin play. So the first thing we're going to do is disconnect this so hit alt and click and I'm going to search for get actor of class. So get actor of class. It's this one here and I want to get my BP trigger which should be right in here. BP trigger right there and then just plug this in here. Now from here we should be able to get the the bind to the start play so let's search for that. Start play isn't it? Start play bind event to start play here and then off of here we're gonna drag and we have to create a custom event and we could just call this start play like that and we're just going to leave that like that for right now 
Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and create our player sequencer. So we're gonna come up here, drag off of here, and I should be able to create, oops. Oh, here it is, create level sequence player right here. And here we'll just select our level sequence right there. So we're basically getting messages, but making everything happen from here. So our, our blueprint third person is basically our control center not anywhere else. This comes in handy because like I said, if you want to disable the player's control, the player's movement, then you're in here and you can do that if you want to do that. Once we have this reference here, we can pull off of it for everything that we need it to do. I have to drag off of the out actor here and search for play. Play sequence player, this is what I want here. And then we'll be dragging off of this node for our other things. So here, What's going to happen is when the player walks across the box, this will trigger the sequencer to start playing. We need to get our second reference to our other blueprint, which is going to get a message to pause. So I've got to get my next actor of class. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate this node here and drag this over here. Yeah. And we're going to hook this up like that. And now I'm going to get the BP event relay, right? So this is going to give us a signal that the, the player needs to be paused. I need to drag off of here and get the bind. So bind stop play should be here, right here. That's perfect. And then we're going to drag off here and get a custom event here. Add a custom event here. And we'll just call this stop or pause, I should say. Pause, because we're going to pause it. And then once that's here, I can drag off of here and get pause. Sequence player, right here like that. So you know, it gets a little crowded in here, but you can reorganize this later too. So then this is just going to pause it. It's getting a little muddled here. And then the very last thing that we have to do, the very last thing, is that we just add a keyboard press. So we'll go keyboard press. And this, I said the letter P should do it. So we'll come to P here, click that. And then all, this is easy, because all we have to, we have our reference already established, which is right here. See, this one is already wired up. This one came wired up. So I actually don't need this node. So let me go ahead and delete that. And then I do need one more reference over here to play again. Play the sequencer. Yeah, and it, it comes in with one already wired up and we don't, I don't need it because I already have it hooked up. So then this one will just press on play. Okay. And then all we have to do is I just have to hook this back up here. Okay, and that's it. I mean, I sure that's it, but it's qu quite a few things to think through, right? But we basically have two event dispatches going on, right? So let's just see if it, if it works as expected. So I'll go play. So here I am playing the game. And I walk along here. When I get to there, it should start the, there's the sequencer starting. And it, see how it paused? And I actually, at this point, I can't move anything. So it's kind of disabled me on its own. Then I hit P, the shot finishes up, and then I have control again, and then off I go. That's a little side effect right there, because I triggered the box again. So what I can do, what we can do for that is, let's see, where's the trigger at? Oh, so what we could do for that is if we can come into the blueprint trigger here, we could just add a do once in here. So we just say do once, so it doesn't happen again. So let's see if that resolves that issue. So we'll hit play again, come in. On the top here, the sequence starts playing, the interactive sequence. I'm frozen, and of course I could put messages on here too, like you've got a big story in your life to make or something. And you'll notice, I don't know, it's hard to see from here, but notice that my player is still in idle mode. 
So it doesn't stop the game motion or anything. This is a live scene from the game. And now if I hit P, it finishes up the sequence and then I'm back to me. And then if I come back this way, see, I don't, I won't trigger it again. Okay. Well, anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you found this of some value. Take care. Have a great day and I'll talk to you next time.